everybody, welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I do have your WWE Elimination Chamber 2020 full show review and results for you guys. As you guys know, we're going to run through the entire show, breaking down every single thing that happened at Elimination Chamber 2020, what I thought of the matches, how I felt about the matches coming in, what I think of the feuds, where I think they're going moving forward, and everything in between. Now, coming into the show, I really didn't have high expectations because a lot of stars were left off of the card, a lot of stuff we pretty much knew was going to happen, but usually Usually with shows like that, things tend to go way better than we expect them to go. Elimination Chamber is typically one of my favorite stipulations of all time. And while we weren't getting a men's Elimination Chamber, I was excited for the tag team version and everything with that matchup. With the show deliver, guys, let's find out together and break down Elimination Chamber 2020. I'm not going to cover the pre-show because we had Viking Raiders versus the Major Bros or Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins for some odd reason. The Viking Raiders did win. I don't know why we got that match, but we did get that match. Let's just shut the hell up and get started with the show. So the main show did start off with Drew Gulak taking on Daniel Bryan, and this is a matchup that I'm very happy they decided to put on this card. A matchup I was dying to see because I know both these guys have excellent wrestling backgrounds. I knew that it would be very technical, ground-based, grappling all over the place, and it delivered on every single level, guys. I absolutely adored this matchup. I thought it was absolutely super fire, nasty, sick particles. All the different grappling we got, the ground wrestling, the just, just excellent technician by both men, the reversals, the grappling. Just excellent shit, man. If you missed this matchup, definitely go back and watch it. If you appreciate a damn good football game of wrestling, then this is the match for you. Just old school Matt technical stuff going on. Adored this match in every single way. Daniel Bryan does end up locking in the yes lock on Drew Gulak, getting him to pass the hell out. I thought he died for a second. Very scary, sort of. Drew Gulak making Daniel Bryan land on his neck so many times in this matchup. I mean, I was on the edge of my seat, man. Just a well put together fault match that I knew would deliver and these guys definitely did that. This match was so good. Daniel Bryan does however defeat Drew Gulak and the look on Daniel Bryan's face after he defeated him makes me believe that he, he kind of wants to tag team with him. I don't know about you guys, but I would love to see these two come together in a tag team and tear the damn house down in the tag team division. Make tag team wrestling great again. This is the way to do it. Put these two guys together and let them burn the damn thing down. But this match was kick-ass, and Daniel Bryan does defeat Drew Gulak. Next up, guys, we did have the United States Championship match between Andrade C. and Almas taking on Humberto Carrillo in a match that we have seen 552 times, I think, now is, is the exact number. All jokes aside, I was not looking forward to this matchup because we've seen them wrestle so much. You know, we've seen Humberto lose time after time after time. Every big match that he's in on Raw, every big match that he's in on pay-per-view or anything like that, any match he's involved in, he, he loses, man. He pretty much loses every single time, and nothing changed here Yes, they put on good matches in the ring. Yes, I can appreciate a good wrestling match. But when uh, it's leading nowhere and we're just going to have the same matchups over and over and it's just nothing new added to the table, it was a good matchup. It was solid. It was fast-paced. The two have great chemistry together. But uh, unfortunately, I was just not into it because I've seen it so many times before. Andrade Cien almost does retain his U.S. championship just like I figured he did get. You know, they did the, the thing that, that Ziggler and Rollins have done in the past where it's like roll-up after roll-up after roll-up, pinning comments after pinning combination, but Andrade Cien almost does get the victory over Humberto, and uh, I agree with this. I think Cien is the bigger name going into Mania, and I think he could get a really good opponent heading into Mania, and hopefully that's what we get here with the U.S. title going into WrestleMania 36. Let's give this man somebody fresh, somebody new, and uh, let's roll with it. Speaking of Carrillo, I don't know where the hell that man goes from here, but hopefully, you know, uh, they can figure out something for the man. Next up, guys, we did have the SmackDown Tag Team Championship Elimination Chamber match between the Usos, the New Day, Heavy Machinery, M Miz and Morrison, Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode, and the Lucha House Party. Now, this matchup was insane, Brad. I mean, the spots in this matchup were crazy. I felt like there was a lot of dead air in the match. Like, it was like the crowd was into it, but they didn't let us really know it until something crazy happened. Like, they chanted, this is awesome, multiple times. We got a holy shit chant. We had some insane things take place in this matchup, and kudos to all the teams involved. I just felt like there was a lot of dead air in between, like, uh, kind of like spot for spot instead of, you know, transitioning to those spots. So, I don't know about that, but the matchup was very entertaining. I found myself engaged 
changed through it. But I will say that um, near, I think it was like near the beginning, it was like just after the match had started, I think maybe two or maybe three or four teams were involved in the matchup thus far. Not all the teams had entered. But Finn Balor reposted one of my photos on Instagram and he retweeted one of my tweets. And it kind of took me out of the match for a second because I was trying to, you know, I was engaged with that. So that was super badass. Shout out to my boy Finn Balor for that. I was marking out. So that's really awesome to see. But anyways, back to this matchup, man. We had some crazy ass stuff go on, man. We had Otis get like thrown. He or he was trying to take out Ziggler. He misses Ziggler, goes through a pod, and then goes out to the outside. So he went through the front of the pod, out the back of the pod, and landed near the announce table area. Not only this, we saw a senton off the top of a pod from Tucker from Heavy Machinery. We also got a double splash off the top of the pods from the Usos. And then we got Lince Dorade climbing to the ceiling of the chamber and pulling himself up and doing a moonsault slash like I guess you would call it like a back tuck off the ceiling of the chamber taking out the rest of the teams in the field absolutely insane stuff I thought that the Lucha House Party were flying all over the ring they were great even though their characters suck you know they can go in the ring and we all we all pretty much knew that now we came down to the final three teams guys it looks like we are building towards Dolph Ziggler versus Otis come Wrestlemania the final three teams were Miz and Morrison the Usos and the New Day. Now Miz and Morrison would eliminate the New Day and we were down to the Usos versus Miz and Morrison. I really thought that the Usos were going to win this thing but ultimately they did come up short and Miz and Morrison do retain their tag titles which, uh, you know, I guess they, they kind of just let the Usos win on SmackDown trying to, you know, divert us and make the match a little bit unpredictable. But for the most part, I found this match enjoyable. You know, again, it wasn't anything immaculate. We had some great spots and everything. It just, I, I don't know, it was like a bunch of dead air. I don't know if you guys felt the same way let me know down in the comment section below what you guys thought. But the Usos did lose at the end here. So Miz and Morrison do retain going into Mania with their SmackDown Tag Titles. Maybe we'll get like a big ladder match between Miz and Morrison, the Usos, and New Day or something like that. I think that would be pretty badass because uh, it, it looks like uh, the Usos are probably going to be the first in line. And New Day aren't too far behind either. So hopefully we get that or something similar to that with a stipulation big-ass tag team title match. But Miz and Morrison do retain their SmackDown down tag titles inside the Elimination Chamber, and this Elimination Chamber, I do believe, was better than the former one. Next up, guys, we did have the no disqualification match between AJ Styles and Aleister Black here going on at Elimination Chamber 2020, a matchup that I was actually looking pretty forward to, and I think it delivered. You know, it wasn't the most insane matchup ever, but I think it told the story that we all knew Undertaker getting involved here. We had some good back and forth. We had a table smash. We had some announced table spots. The club got involved. Undertaker did show up. The gong went off. The lights went out. He took care of the club. He took care of AJ Styles. Black Mask to AJ Styles and Aleister Black does win and we have our Mania matchup set up for WrestleMania 36 between AJ Styles and The Undertaker going to take place down in Tampa. Now again, I think these guys would probably have a much better match if there was no stipulation at all. And if you gave these guys, you know, 20, 25 minutes, I think they'd tear the damn house down. This was a solid matchup, but I think this is more of a story-driven match, even though we did get some good-ish along the way. But Aleister Black does win, and we, we pretty much figure what would happen here. But uh, we are all set for Mania 36, Taker versus Styles. Oh yeah, I should probably... I should should probably do this then. There you go. Next up, guys, we did have the Raw side of things as far as the Tag Team Championships go. Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy taking on the Street Profits to try and regain their Raw Tag Team Championships here at Elimination Chamber. This matchup was decent. You know, nothing too crazy or over-the-top special. I feel like this matchup was more of just telling a story, you know, between Kevin Owens and the Viking Raiders both showing up in this matchup, distracting Rollins and Buddy Murphy, getting the Street Profits the victory, retaining the tag titles, which is pretty surprising. I thought that after the matchup, Rollins was going to turn on Murphy. That did not happen, but Street Profits do retain the Tag Team Championships, and I guess we're going to get Seth Rollins versus Buddy Murphy going into Mania, or maybe Seth Rollins turns on Buddy Murphy. I'm not sure what we got going on, but it seems like this feud is going to continue. I think they are done with the tag titles for sure, but it looks like the focus is going to be on the Viking Raiders and Kevin Owens, so I don't know where this puts us for Mania, but hopefully we get a marquee matchup going in there, whether it be Rollins and Murphy, Kevin Owens and Rollins, Murphy and Owens. I don't freaking know, man. Just give me a good football game. But the Street Profits do retain their Raw Tag Team Championships here at Elimination Chamber.
Next up, guys, we have the three-on-one Intercontinental Championship handicap match between Braun Strowman, the Intercontinental Champion, taking on Sami Zayn, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Cesaro. And holy nipple squirt and milk on your raisins, Brad. Samuel Zayn is your new Intercontinental Champion. I cannot believe this with my own eyes. They did, like, this double suplex halluva kick move, and Sami Zayn pins Braun Strowman to win his first singles championship on the main roster. His first championship on the main roster, the Intercontinental Championship. This shit should have happened forever ago, probably like 2016. Man was just spinning his wheels, doing absolutely nothing. Here he is with the title. He Every single promo this man cuts is, is fantastic. I don't know if you guys know this. If this guy would just get back in the ring, let him put on good matches, let him cut his promos, the character that he does is absolutely fantastic. I just wish that he wasn't in this feud particular. I have a feeling that he's just going to get destroyed at main and have Braun have his little WrestleMania moment winning the title back. Hopefully that's not the case, but Shinsuke Cesaro and Sami Zayn get the job done, and Sami Zayn is your new Intercontinental Champion. I can't freaking believe it. Absolutely crazy stuff, but Braun Strowman is no longer a champion after just recently getting the title, so I don't know what this means going forward into Mania. I'm guessing possibly we could have a Fatal 4-Way or maybe a big Intercontinental Ladder match or something like that, but uh, that remains to be seen, but Sami Zayn's your new Intercontinental Champion, so I'm just going to rest my laurels on that right there. But uh, yeah, new Intercontinental Champion, Samuel Zayn. And for the main event, guys, we had the Raw Women's Championship number one contendership elimination chamber match between Liv Morgan, Ruby Riot, Shayna Baszler, Asuka, Natalya, and Sarah Logan. And this matchup was damn predictable, Brad. We all knew what the hell was going to go down, and it pretty much did. Shayna Baszler dominated this hoe, eliminated every damn body, made everybody look like a total bitch. It came down to her and Asuka, and, you know, they had some back and forth for a little bit. I was kind of enjoying the little, you know, back and forth for 30 seconds, and then, you know what, it was over. Locked in the, 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 the Coquita Clutch Meister. It was over, and, and Shayna Baszler's going to WrestleMania. We all knew it. I mean, my God, it was, this match was boring, and I just... It was just, it was just boring. Just like Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler puts me to sleep. She is the female equivalent of Baron Corbin slash Trash Corbin. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go to sleep, Brad, after that. I, I it, it, she needs to lock the Coquita Clutchmeister on me and let me go to sleep. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I didn't expect it to go down that way. I thought it'd be a little bit more unpredictable than that. But, nah, they just, they just ran through the gauntlet, man. She just kicked the shit out of everybody and got the hell out of there. Made it easier for me so now I can go to sleep earlier. But, I don't know. I guess we're getting Becky versus Shayna, but I, I heard Vince was kind of tired of Shayna already, so I don't know. I guess we'll kind of see if Becky retains at WrestleMania or not. But that does it for your Elimination Chamber 2020 review, guys. I mean, besides the opening match and the tag team match had its moments. You know, some cool spots here and there. Sami Zayn's your new Intercontinental Champion. And I mean, uh, we get AJ Styles versus The Undertaker. And that's pretty much your Elimination Chamber 2020 review, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy the review. Comment down below what you thought of Elimination Chamber. I would love to know down in the comment section below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at my damn toy. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE action figure videos. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.